Hey everybody, how's it going? Trim here. Hope you're all having a great day. Coming at you today with another motor vlog. And today, I'm just going to have a little chat with you guys about a topic that I've had in mind, about something that I've been considering. Um, but again, it's a big decision, it's a lot of money, and it's something that I don't know if it's worth it. That's why we're going to talk about it today. So guys, today the thing that I'm going to be talking about is cinematics in videos and the best way to create cinematics in videos is one of two ways. The first way is a DSLR camera. DSLR cameras are roughly £300. Um, normally you need lenses on them to make them even better than they already are. And you can take still photographs and you can also take video with them. A similar example of what a DSLR looks like is if you go to my Triumph review video, the beginning clip of me going around the bend on the 765, that is of a DSLR and that is one of the shots that my good friend Chris Moto 23 took. So that is the quality of a DSLR and I've constantly been thinking lately, because of all these first rides I'm doing and stuff, maybe I should start saving up for a DSLR. But £300 it's a lot of money, and if I don't get the use out of it, it'll be a real kicker. Currently, I've learned how to um, take shots with the GoPro, but even if the shots are wonky, I've learned how to uh, take the wonky. Oh, that's awful! Take the wonkiness out of the photo, uh, out of the video. Sorry, um, in editing, and I think that process is called. I think it's time warping or something. Maybe not time warping, maybe warp stabilising, I think that's it, warp stabilising. Um, it's an effect that Premiere Pro has, um, and basically if you take a really shaky shot, it instantly takes it all out. It takes a good couple of minutes to render all of the, uh, all of the stills in the video, and then it turns it into this real smooth, finished video, which is great. So. The main point of a DSLR is A, the quality is fantastic, and B, you can get them on a camera slider so you can take them really smooth panning shots. And it's just like, that would be really awesome. But again, that's just for cinematics, really. There's, they're not good for anything but pretty picture and video. Okay, so let's talk drones, guys. So, obviously, the main perks of a drone are the cinematic capabilities. The capabilities that you can do with a drone are fantastic. I do know for a fact you can only use them in certain places, uh, such as um, not very built up places, uh, you can't use them in cities, you can't use them near airports. So there are restrictions to where you can use a drone. Um, but if you're in somewhere like a field or you're in like, I don't know, a, um, like, let me think, like a nature reserve, I'd have thought that would be okay personally. But I do believe that if you are using it in an area that is not allowed, the police are allowed to come and tell you to please bring the drone back and move on. Um, correct me if I'm wrong with that, but I'm pretty sure that is the case here in England. Um, Obviously the price is a bit of a kicker. Now you could go and splash out on the GoPro Karma, which the GoPro Karma is the GoPro Hero 5, but it comes with a drone attachment. Now the drone on its own is four to 500 pounds, and that is not including the 400, 300 pound GoPro. So that's a very expensive piece of kit. I do know that you can get some more well-priced drones where it's like an all-in-one unit so you charge the whole drone um, they seem to be a bit more what I would personally go for they just seem a bit better I wouldn't want to have to buy a brand new GoPro and then use buy a drone to go with it I mean when I used I mean I have um, experience using a DSLR quite recently only for photographs but I used uh, my good friend Chris's uh, DSLR to take some photos of him while I let him have a go on my uh, Honda CBR and 
it was very easy to use for somebody like me who's never really using a handheld camera before uh, for, photo, for, to, for photography. Um, and it was a great quality camera. The, the pictures came out absolutely fantastic. I put one of them on my Facebook page. Um, yeah, and the quality was fantastic. My opinion would be that a drone is more beneficial than a DSLR, but it's a tough one. It is. It's not an easy question to answer for a motor vlogger who does cinematic work. Um, DSLR can make some stunning cinematics. And the thing is with a drone is, if you used a drone in every one of your first rides, which most likely, yeah, you would have to, uh, granted, you could get some cool shots, but I don't know. What are the limitations? I'm presuming I can't go through on that because that's flashing red. That's correct. So, I don't know. I was just going to say with a drone then that seeing a drone constantly on a first ride Cinemax will get boring, but that's not entirely true because you can go really high up and get an aerial shot, but then you can also have it like hovering off the ground a bit and getting like you know, going round the bike like that. So I suppose it's not just it's not just aerial shots, you can do loads with it. Um I'd be very worried about crashing a drone though to be honest. I'd be very worried about that. because uh, they are not cheap. Uh so that'd be something on my mind. And I think they've brought in a law now where you need a drone flying license. Uh don't quote me on that one but I have heard that before. I don't know if that's just for professional photographers though. Um, so yeah, that's that's pretty much all I can think of, really. So let me know what you guys think down below. Let me know what you think about drones and DSLRs. Um, if you have a drone, please tell me what you think to it. Same with the DSLR. Let me know what you think to it down below. So take it easy, guys, uh, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.